Hi guys, I had a website subscriber email me asking for advice on how to weld this joint right here, outside corner. And the top piece is quarter inch, and then this angle is 3 8 thick. And the way he's got it stacked, that top piece is shelved over a little bit. So essentially, I'll weld this off camera, but essentially it looks like that. With the 3 8 on the bottom and the quarter on the side. And he's got a, a prime weld 225, so I'm going to use that to try to replicate what he's working with and show the best way I would do it with this machine. And I sell this machine on my website, this one in the 325 Prime Weld. I've been really happy with both these machines. I, for what I do, I need this one, the, the 325, a little more amps and a water cooler because the torch gets pretty hot if you do a lot of aluminum welding. But for this video I'm doing today, we're just using the two, 225 with an air-cooled torch. And it, it's plenty capable for this. I start the weld out at 225 amps, and then halfway through I ramp out to probably, I don't know, maybe 180 amps throughout the rest of the weld. In about an eighth inch overlap. So this is about as thick as you can go for a single pass. You'd have a hard time getting a full penetration weld and getting it nice and crowned over smooth. Unless you, you know, like if this was 3 8 and 3 8 I'd probably run one single pass down in the root and then either a fat one on top or two stringers. Maybe a fat one with just a little bit of weave if you needed it. But I think I could get away with doing this with just a single pass. And then I'll show you later in the video exactly what he's using this for. It'll make a little more sense. And this is about six inches long. And since I did tacks on the ends without filler rod when I was fitting it up, I'm gonna put a little bit more on this end one over here because when I start welding, it's gonna to wanna to expand and this might pop if you don't put enough filler rod on it. And then like I said in a couple other videos, this can help you having a thick spot at the end so you have something to run your weld into if you're not good yet at ramping off your amperage because if you don't ramp off your amperage and this isn't here it'll it'll uh, grow and blow out the part at the end so that can help you if you're a beginner in this 225 amp prime weld i have the amperage maxed out all the way at 225 amps Wrap the corner a little bit better. Because that's where cracks are likely to start if you have a thin spot right here on the end, so make sure to get that good. I'd probably better address this before the nitpickers in the comments get after me. This, can you see right here on the top part of the weld bead how it's darker? There's like impurities in it. That's because this material is like, I don't know, it's like five years old scrap. So if you want to get it all nice and shiny without that, you gotta you gotta prep it like I explained on the website, but I didn't do that in this video. And I asked him to email me a screenshot of his exact welder settings on this machine. And two of the adjustments were off from what I would normally use. If you want to learn how to go from this to this, 
I'll show you exactly how I do it on my website. And then on the parts he was making, he had a like a top cap, triangle piece, and I would wrap around and weld a little bit of the backside too right here for a little bit more reinforcement, come around you know, like a half inch or something, because that's where it's going to be prone to break with all the flexing. He's making a mount for his trolling motor. This is it's this angle piece here that bolts to the ends. And on this weld, I didn't burn through the whole way, so it's not full penetration, which really doesn't matter. A lot of you guys freak out over that for no reason. Depends on what you're building. But, uh, so this part is probably going to be melted through about like this. Sorry for scribbling here. I'm not braced on the table. But that's probably about what the weld bead puddle looks like on this part. If you're needing an open, you know, if you're needing a full penetration weld, you can you can burn it in hotter on the top, but then you risk the chance of getting a hazy gray weld and it's not going to look as pretty. Or you could just, you know, put some put some small welds on the back for reinforcement. Depends on the part. Okay, thanks for watching. The rest of this video is a quick ad for my website, so you can tune out if you're not interested in that. So I have a website teaching you how to fabricate with aluminum and weld with it. And it's very detailed. You know, there's, there's so many things that can go wrong, little things. If you have five things that aren't quite right, it makes it impossible to make welds like this. And I walk you through exactly how I do what I do on my website. You know, welder settings, torch setup, tungsten type, shaping, diameters, fill rod types and diameters, how to clean the material properly, everything. If, if anything isn't answered on the website, feel free to email me. It makes good videos like this one too. And the website's only $45 and it's a one-time subscription fee. There's no ongoing monthly or yearly BS where you have to keep paying. It's just unlimited viewing. So check it out if you're interested. Here, I'll run you through the main page of the website real quick. So first off, I show an overhead panoramic view of all my machinery that I use with part numbers on it. And then we got torch set up. I show you exactly what parts I use and how I shape my tungsten and why. Get you started off there, right? That's very important to get that right so you don't fight it. Basic welder settings, you know, gas flow rates and everything, and then advanced welder settings if you have a more advanced welder. And then, you know, different frequency settings, factors that determine what TIG welder you should buy, you know, if you need a water cooler or not, how big of a welder, where to buy aluminum welding material online or your local stores, and then how to cut the material, 10 different tools that I use, how to properly clean it. I go into detail on that one. That one's a problem that a lot of people have. And then arc shots. I have high quality arc shots that show you exactly from my point of view what I'm doing. First off, we do weld puddles and then what, you know, what happens if you accidentally touch your tunks in which everybody does. You learn to minimize that. Welding exercise number two, we got beads with no fill or rod to get your torch hand working the right way. And then I explain what fill or rod selection, what type, oops, what type and size I use. Then we go to spot tax with fill or rod. I stripe the rod so you can see how much I'm feeding in. And then exercises with the fill or rod, how to get it looking like you weld like a machine. Butt welds, T welds, outside corner welds like this one that we're doing right now in this video. And then how to master your weld restarts. A lot of people have problems with this too. Every single one of these little dips is a weld restart. So if you can get it looking like that, then your weld restarts come pretty mindless to you. That's very beneficial. Then I show you some out of position welding. TIG button that I sell is really good for this so you're not kicking around a foot pedal. And then I just have a bunch of build videos. Some of these are available on YouTube, free to view, but a lot of them I don't have on there anymore. You gotta be on the website to check them out. I'll scroll through all these, there's quite a few of them. Intake elbow, tubing, made a spud gun. And then I explain my little rotary position welder and how to calculate feed speeds for it to make your welds look pretty depending on the diameter and what you're doing. And then I go into more detail on pulser settings if you're doing, you know, like this looks like a machine did it, which I had a robot arm for this one just to illustrate the spacing and everything, the pulses and the high and the lows on it. 
slingshot, Y pipe. How to shape tungsten really sharp for stainless welding. There's a trick to that too. And I show how to weld thin metal, like actual razor blades back here in the background, fixture those up. Stainless tube. And if you screw up a stainless weld, you can come back and touch it up. I show you how I do that. There's a fun beginner project, a water box. And then why I wear the gloves that I do, explain that. And then how to cut your tungsten to length. A lot of people do this wrong, and you'll end up cracking it and fighting it, and you won't realize it forever. And then the you know stacking dimes technique. I go into detail on how I feed the filler rod and how I move, the timing on everything. Some BMX seat posts, flask, aluminum merge collector. I made a flower pot out of that. Cowbell, blending your welds so you can't see them. Show you how I build this from scratch out of sheet metal. And then I a three-way joint. There's a template. I, I did a 3D modeling template so you can cut them out and wrap the paper around them and mark them before you weld them and fit them. And then this one's a good one. Cast aluminum TIG repair with dye penetrant so you can see where the cracks are, how to clean it. Um, these elbows that I used to build a lot, I just put a camera right in front of me and showed you my whole process from start to finish, how I fit them and weld everything, what order, order of operations. Yeah, and like I said earlier, calculating rotary position speeds if you want to get really complicated with it and get it really perfect looking. A little small urn. Break off a dirt bike lever, show you how to weld that back up and shape it how you want. I like mine shorter, most ones most come long and that's why they break because they're too dang long. I just like to two finger them. Make them look like a mountain bike lever. Uh, stainless, how to get the minimum color build up if you're getting too hot out here, you don't start turning anything other than golds. Sometimes that matters. Show you a repair, on a, a repair on a plumber's drill. This is really thin tubing. Quick one on MIG welding with a small MIG welder. Clay pigeon thrower repair, pumpkin. And then these countersinks that I use all the time, a lot of these suck for aluminum. There's only one that's really good and I give you part numbers for those. And then how to isolate each hand and get perfect looking lap welds. And then I show the welder settings. A lot of people are curious about this. I show the welder settings, the exact welder settings I use to get that weld beat on pop cans. And then there's just an image gallery of all the parts I built over the past several, you know, 10, 15 years. Okay. Enough for rambling. If you're interested, there it is. 6061.com. Thanks for watching.